Signor Presidente della Commissione, signora Presidente della Regione Capitale, signor Sindaco di Copenaghen, eh, cari colleghi eh, sindaci, presidenti di Regione, colleghi del Comitato delle Regioni. Eh, siamo giunti qui in occasione del quinto vertice europeo delle Regioni e delle città che tiene la nostra istituzione. In genere i vertici segnano momenti importanti per la vita del nostro Comitato. Questa volta ci siamo impegnati in una doppia scommessa, promuovere le città nell'agenda europea e in quella mondiale. Si tratta di una scommessa ambiziosa per la governance europea perché affrontiamo la questione urbana tenendo conto della composizione multilivello del nostro Comitato sulla base delle nostre responsabilità quotidiane in quanto rappresentanti eletti e amministratori del denaro pubblico, nonché della nostra forte sensibilità per la dimensione territoriale, sia rurale che urbana, dello sviluppo e della nostra esperienza in materia di politiche europee. È una scommessa ambiziosa anche a livello globale, perché nutriamo la fondata speranza che questo vertice contribuisca a far sentire con più forza la voce degli enti territoriali nel quadro dei negoziati internazionali di Rio più 20. In particolare, il nostro auspicio è che a Rio sia riconosciuta la necessità di fare delle politiche di sviluppo urbano un elemento fondamentale delle politiche nazionali di sviluppo sostenibile. Signore e signori, non è un caso che questo vertice si tenga a Copenaghen. Anzitutto è la capitale della Danimarca, il Paese che attualmente, come sapete, detiene la Presidenza dell'Unione e il cui, il cui Governo ha già espresso un forte interesse per gli argomenti che andremo a discutere oggi e domani. Domani il Primo Ministro Torni Schmidt ci confermerà sicuramente questo interesse e lo conferma con la sua autorevole presenza. Inoltre, Copenaghen e la sua regione, lo avete visto, sono al centro di molte delle tematiche che tratteremo durante questo vertice. Lo avete visto o lo vedrete se non avete ancora visitato la città. In qualche modo sono le incarnazioni europee della pianificazione urbana intelligente di una mobilità dolce, della qualità della vita, di una gestione attenta alle risorse, dell'innovazione tecnologica e sociale, in pratica di uno sviluppo urbano sostenibile che combina armoniosamente l'ambiente, l'economia e il sociale, come naturalmente potreste dire sono molte delle, vostre, delle nostre città, ma questo credo sia un bel esempio dove tenere il nostro, il nostro meeting. Vorrei ringraziare vivamente eh, la signora Vibeke Storm Rasmussen e Frank Jensen, Presidente eh, della Regione Capitale e Sindaco della Città, per il sostegno che fin dall'inizio ci hanno fornito quando siamo venuti a illustrare loro eh, il nostro progetto e naturalmente attraverso le rispettive organizzazioni. Through the various organizations and we'd like to thank them very much for the contribution that they've made in the preparation for the meeting. To complete this overview, I'm very pleased to pay tribute to the effort of the institutions of the European Union to help this summit take place. First and foremost, of course, the European Commission with its president, José Manuel Barroso, who has actually changed his schedule to be with us this afternoon. That gives us a chance, in fact, to wish him a slightly early happy birthday. Happy birthday, sir, Mr. President, and thank you very much for having given up some of your valuable time to be with us. It's the President's birthday tomorrow, but he took the time to come to be with us today. Thank you very much indeed. Commissioner Connie Helgor, and Director General Carl Falkenberg, and Daniel Kalecha Crespo, not to mention the European Parliament, its President Martin Schulz, as well as various members of the Parliament, the Economic and Social Committee, whose President Staffan Nielsen will help us a great deal. We had very fruitful cooperation also with various European associations, in particular Euro cities. 
Mr. Jensen is the president of that and the Council of the Regions of Europe, the CCRE. A large number of mayors, of course, are members of that body. Also, there are other events going on at the same time as our summit, the meeting of the jury for the European Town Planning Prize, as well as the European Architectural Policy Forum, which is going to be held tomorrow. I think part of the reason we can expect this to be a success is that we've selected a very sensible topic to deal with. Ladies and gentlemen, since antiquity, European citizens have been associated with citizenship and the creation of wealth. In the last 200 years, cities have drawn populations, or people, sorry, looking for better living conditions and freedom. They have been continually growing to such an extent that today 73% of the European population live in cities with more than 20,000 inhabitants. But this growth rate has never reached the levels that we've seen in other parts of the world. We've got some exceptions, Paris, London or Istanbul, but European citizens aren't megalopolises. Our cities are medium-sized, even if they're capital cities. And they have constantly regenerated as places to live and trade, as well as centres of intellectual, social, cultural and political life. They have been constantly reinventing, along with other cities and smaller urban, cent urban centres which are near them. And they have continually content connected the various levels of government at regional, state and EU level. With the development of services and high-tech and information technology, cities have changed their function. Architecture has changed too to meet the new environmental and energy requirements and we've had more mobility and different kinds of mobility. European citizens are a kind of fabric, but fabric rooted in its territory and in constant mutation. We wanted to talk about this European urban fabric in the 21st century because it's having some problems. It might seem paradoxical, but cities are, at the same time, the cause and solution to the main problems that contemporary society and contemporary economies face. At the same time, during this period of economic and financial crisis, and a world which is faced with an unsustainable developmental model. Cities have a great role to play to change our lifestyle, stimulate creativity, attract talents, and allow people to find work and work with undertakings. Cities are frequently, of course, a meeting place for the problems that we have to face as well. And it's a way, therefore, of trying to come up with solutions for some of these problems that we've organised today's summit. I'm confident that with the working parties and our plenary sessions will be areas where we won't just see discussions of the problems, but also solutions which people can take back to their towns and cities and regions and try to apply. We should remember the fact that some of our hosts have sent representatives to talk to us about some of the problems and possible new models for Europe, which will allow us to emerge in a sustainable and lasting way from the crisis and not slip back into it. Ladies and gentlemen, let me say a few words now about European governance, a topic which is something that's close to our hearts. 55 years on from the signing of the Treaty of Rome, 20 years on from the setting up of cohesion policy, we need to realise that the potentials of cities in the European Union has not been sufficiently tapped into. It's quite true that the Union has no formal legal competence in this area, but it's equally true that the Union has a growing influence as far as urban development is concerned, particularly through European cohesion policy. The trail was blazed by pilot projects, 
After these, we had the community initiatives to breathe new life into our cities, Urban 1 and Urban 2. Politically speaking, the importance of a political, oh, sorry, an integrated approach to urban policy was recognised by the Lipsia Charter from 2007 on European Sustainable Cities and the various updatings of that charter. There's Urbact, the community program where 300 cities are now taking part, exchanging experience and networking. Other aspects, including the structural funds, have brought cities or urban conurbations together under the auspices of the union. The mayor's pact with uh, 3,000 members, the capital of culture. It's uh, a prize which is fought over very hard every year. We've had 46 of these so far. Green capitals, they've only at the moment had four of these, but that again is also a sought after title. And smart cities, or often smart regions. The time seems to me to have arrived to move forward into a new phase, because the overlapping of sectoral policy doesn't actually make up one single European policy. Despite the fact that we have speaking partners in the Commission and national administrations and with the commitment to better coordination, we often find that if you're trying to run a city, you have a large number of problems to address. Obviously, we've got a budget which is quite considerable for these projects, but promoting the urban dimension in the, in the area between 2014 and 2020 still needs to have a great deal of work done in it. That explains why we are a bit unhappy about the European Urban Platform Programme which is supposed to bring together 300 cities selected from the member states. And I see that the European Parliament, in a recent hearing on the structural fund regulation, shares our unhappiness. The platform is slightly worrying. It's a bit of a politico-technical hybrid, and in particular, it envisages vertical procedures which aren't really in line with modern partnership practice. That also explains why we are concerned about the rigid list of technical priorities which have been generated by the Europe 2020 strategy. What we need to do, we believe, is encourage new forms of governance if we want to allow European cities, including medium-sized cities or cities lagging behind as far as development is concerned or outlying cities, to start to become factories of solidarity, tolerance, creativity and competitiveness. And if we want to allow the union to draw benefits from the dynamics of the promotion of cities and regions, we have to proceed in that way. This new kind of approach needs to allow the region and member states to see cities and regions not just as blank spaces, which are part and parcel of the major goals of the Europe, but as creative subjects that are able themselves to approach Europe in an innovative way. Recognising this role that the cities can play as actors on the actual development policy stage and encouraging them to work one with another and also, of course, giving the money to them so that they can work better and in better harmony with other governance levels. That's the only way that Europe can actually make the transition towards tomorrow's type of development at the same time. And that, of course, means subsidiarity. Big goals that we all share, but also the wisdom to allow the imagination and capacity of our regions to achieve these goals by themselves. So as we look to the future, we have to see that cities need to be able to play a role in this future European governance if they are to unlock all their potential and help the Union to emerge from this difficult crisis a crisis which is refusing to go away. Mr. President of the Commission, colleagues, 
I think I didn't jump the gun as far as what we'll be saying in the debate this afternoon when, with the remarks I've just made, but I would like to conclude my introductory statement with an appeal to the European Union, an appeal for more powerful partnership, something which would encourage an integrated sustainable development strategy and for a multi-level system of governance that's able to unlock the potential which I think our cities have and which we represent here. Thank you very much for listening to me.